Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be studying the rib bones of your thoracic cavity. So the rib cage is basically made up of 12 ribs as you all know. Out of the 12 ribs, the first 7 ribs are known as the true ribs or the vertebrosternal ribs as they come behind from the vertebra and anteriorly they are attached to the sternum via their costal cartilages. However, below the 7th rib, there is the 8th, 9th and 10th rib these are known as the vertebrochondral ribs because they come from the vertebra behind and they get attached to the costal cartilages of the ribs above, hence known as vertebrochondral. And even below, the 11th and 12th ribs are known as the floating ribs or the vertebral ribs because they have only vertebral attachments. Anteriorly, they have no attachment, hence they are called floating ribs. So, out of these, the first seven I mentioned earlier are the true ribs, while the rest of the ribs, which are from the 8th to the 12th rib, they are basically false ribs. So, here are a couple of ribs in front of you. Let's begin talking about them. So, it is important to know, starting from the beginning of your thoracic cage, the ribs increase in size up to the 7th rib. After the 7th rib, the length of the ribs decreases. Also, another fact is that the posterior ends of the ribs are narrower than the anterior ends, which are broader. Similar to the vertebra, the ribs also are of two types, the typical and the atypical. The typical ribs are the third to ninth ribs, while the atypical ones are the first two and the last few, which are the 10th, 11th and 12th. In today's video, I'll talk about a typical rib First, I will tell you the bony features and attachments of it. And then we will discuss the atypical ribs in the later videos. To begin with, as I mentioned earlier, this is your rib. We all know that it has a more broader anterior end and a narrower posterior end. The posterior end bears the head, neck, tubercle. Apart from that, the entire rib is a shaft. So let's talk about the side determination first. It is necessary to know the posterior end, as I mentioned earlier, is narrower, containing the head, neck, and the tubercle. So, and the anterior end bears a concave depression. This is point number one. Point number two is that the shaft is convex outwards, while the inner surface consists of a costal groove on its lower part. So now I know I have to keep it like this. So this is the rib of the left side. Left side because suppose this is your vertebra and this is your left side of the body. So this is your left rib because this is the posterior end which has to articulate with the vertebra. And then this is the anterior end which has to bear a concave depression and it is supposed to be broader. And there should be a tubercle at the posterior end, most importantly convex outwards and inner surface consists of a costal groove in its lower part. Now let's talk about the bony features. First, let's talk about the head of the rib. The head of the rib is basically the most extreme part of the posterior end. It consists of two facets for the articulation with the vertebrae as we studied earlier. The head gives attachment to the radiate ligament anteriorly and the crest of the head basically gives attachment to the intra-articular ligament of the costovertebral joint. Moving on there is the constricted area which is known as the neck. The neck consists of a posterior surface which is rough, an anterior surface, a superior border which is also known as the crest of the spine and what are the attachments of the neck? The posterior rough surface gives attachment to the inferior costotransverse ligament the crest of the neck gives attachment to the superior costo transverse ligament. And finally, the anterior part of the neck is related to the costal pleuras. Moreover, it is also important to know that the neck basically lies in front of the transverse process of the vertebra. Then comes your tubercle. This is your tubercle. The tubercle consists of a medial articular part. This has to articulate with the facet on the transverse process anterior surface of the vertebra if you remember the lateral part is non-articular and it gives attachment to the lateral costal transverse ligament so that was about the posterior end five centimeter lateral to the tubercle lies your 
angle of the rib. The angle of the rib is where the rib undergoes a sharp bend and it twists. So this is the angle of the rib. Now we'll discuss the entire shaft of the rib. The important part about the shaft of the rib is that it has a outer surface, inner surface, a superior border and an inferior border. More important is that in the inner surface of the rib is grooved. This is known as the costal groove. Just above the costal groove lies a ridge and just below the costal groove lies the lower border of your rib. The lower border is mostly very thin while the upper border is rounded and is divided into an outer and inner lip. The costal groove consists of the structures known as the VAN. From above downwards, it's the posterior intercostal vein. Go down, it's the posterior intercostal artery. Even further down is the intercostal nerve. This is the order of structures in the costal groove. Now let's talk about the attachments of the shaft. The shaft gives attachment to the angle. It gives attachment to the sacrospinalis lateral fibers, the thoracolumbar fascia. Other muscles inserted in the shaft from the floor of the costal groove arises the internal intercostal muscle. In the outer lip of the upper border of your rib is attached the external intercostal muscle. The ridge that lies above the costal groove gives origin to the intercostalis intimi muscle. So that's all about the main basic features of your typical rib. In the next video, we will talk about the atypical rib starting from the first rib. Thank you so much for watching.